Casting Beyond the Sea podcast, the show that talks about relationships and marriage. I'm Bob. Today we're going to be talking about facing webcam fears with a Filipina. It could be anybody you're talking to from a distance of thousands of miles. It can be very uncomfortable. It's something you're going to have to do whenever you are involved with the woman overseas. So I'd like to help maybe make that a little less stressful here today. So that's the topic of today's podcast. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and following me on Facebook and Twitter so you can stay connected with me and keep up to date with all the latest podcasts, videos on the YouTube channel, and relationship and marriage advice that can only be found right here on Casting Beyond the Sea. This is the first live podcast that I have done, so there may be some things, uh, some bugs that have to be worked out here tonight. I don't really know. I um, was not able to practice with uh, live call-ins, but should anybody want to um, call in or chat, leave a comment, they would have to download the Podbean app on their mobile device and then follow there subscribe follow so you can be alerted to upcoming live podcasts as well as uh, leave comments and call in here on this on live podcasts i've got like 15 other podcasts up there so far so that gives you some idea of the uh, subject matter but you know we can talk about hundreds of things so far we've got one called uh, go where you're wanted the gwy double that's what gwyw stands for go where you're wanted and what that is kind of my story i was uh, alone for about 30 years here in the united states <clears throat> excuse me i didn't want to be single the rest of my life little did i know i was wanted in one country, the Philippines, a lot more than I was wanted in the United States. So that's what GWYW stands for if you see it. Got another one podcast out about muscles not mattering to uh, women. I don't think they really do. And I've worked out most of my life. I don't think it's something that, you know, is as big a deal with women as it might be for guys. Got a podcast about rushing the altar, how to love a woman and a filipina's love for her family i do care very much about marriage and people enjoying marriage for all it's worth that's essentially why i started the youtube channel love beyond the sea and that's to talk about love and that's to talk about oh the distinctives of loving a, a filipina wife i have another one called did i fall in love too quickly I don't know, is getting married in 54 days too quickly? We do have a, a six-part series called Sexual Detox. It's a guide for men who are sick of porn. It's a review of a book I did, book by Tim Challies, and that's up there too, six-part series. That was something I didn't feel comfortable doing on YouTube, and so thankfully, with um, a website called lvbts.com, lvbts.com, short for Love Beyond the Sea, you can go there and uh, take a look around. That's all the social media-related things for Love Beyond the Sea. I've got a podcast called Chatting with Several or Chatting with One. Kind of ties into tonight's topic about facing webcam fears with a Filipina. How to earn the respect of your Filipina wife. This is something that a man can use for any woman, overseas or domestic. Many, many practical things I talked about there. And that's what I hope my channel is. It's about practical things men can use to, you know, be good husbands and, and uh, get married and stay married. I have a podcast called Early American Struggles for My Filipina Wife. And um, recently one on how I proposed to her. Now, um, by the way, please um, 
I, I certainly hope you can listen in. If you have the mobile device uh, downloaded from Podbean, you can leave comments. I don't know what's going to happen tonight or if there will be any. Uh, if somebody wants to call in live, they'll give me an opportunity to see how that works. And I would love to be able to talk to you about any comments or questions that you have. I'll just start very introductorily here why I'm doing this, <clears throat> why I'm taking the time to make about 540 videos on YouTube in the last two years and a half, why I've started to do podcasts. And that is because I found my wife after a long time of being alone. And I, I knew it was bad then, although I figured I was the one complaining the most about trying to find a wife. And I don't know, some people seem to think that was a legitimate concern. Others, not so much. No big deal. Well, it mattered to me. And I didn't give up. And I ended up going 9,800 flight miles away to marry a woman who I had not met in person before that. But I always maintained I was serious about finding a wife. And this was back in March of 2015 when I got this idea and took it seriously. Previously, I just assumed I would find somebody about my own age in my own country, which is uh, the United States. I live here in Nebraska in the middle of the country. And, well, the old things that you've always been taught, you know, find somebody in in church or common interest and all I found was that there were single women there but they that, that doesn't mean they didn't have a boyfriend and it just it just didn't work out and I was very much in despair and one day I asked my pastor well at least I lamented to him you know this is no way to live no way to live being single and struggling and frustrated and alone, lacking purpose, I thought. And he agreed with me. This was a man who um, was not just going to tell me what I wanted to hear or tell me what would get me off of his case. He told me, yeah, you're right. I, I agree with you. Marriage is best. And, and he actually rolled up his sleeves and tried to help me in uh, different ways. And I really was motivated by that. And so I actually did find somebody one day, thanks to his help. All he did was say, here's an article. Um, your situation isn't the same, but this man found a wife. Uh, some similarities, found her in the Philippines. So it's up to you what you want to do with this article. But I'm just trying to help. And... Um, I was just coming off of a situation where it really got me feeling like nothing was going to change and, and it was all hopeless and pointless. And he said, well, when you recover from this, I've got an idea. I'll let you know. And about a week later, I said, okay, I think I'm ready. What do you have in mind? So he told me about this and I thought, Filipina, huh? Well, I've kind of always thought Filipinas were very beautiful from the time I, I knew what a Filipina was. I just didn't ever think about marrying one. In fact, my sister who passed away, oh, when did she pass away? She passed away before I got married. So maybe she passed away in 2013 or 2014. She said that she believed I was going to marry a Filipina. And I actually scolded her for that because I, I thought, you know, I can't find anybody here where I am. Can't find anybody at church, anybody at work, anywhere, anybody anywhere, coffee shops, through people I knew. How is I going to marry a Filipina? Well, she turned out to be 100% right. Wouldn't you know it? And this was before my pastor told me about uh, the article about a man marrying a Filipina. And so I thought, well, what have I got to lose? I've got everything to gain. And I really needed a wife. So I what, did what? I started looking up websites. Where am I supposed to find this Filipina? 
and I went to the website Christian Filipina and um, I don't know if there's anybody here right now let me just kind of play around here see what I can see it doesn't look like anybody is here yet and I know from doing some YouTube live streams some people didn't really show up until later by the way I'm not doing any YouTube live streams right now because I did about 63 of those and then um, you know the attendance was starting to decline I thought well you know here I'm doing two three four hour live streams and once you do a live stream on YouTube it's really not likely to be seen after that and so I thought you know I just need to devote myself to making videos there and a friend of mine came up with the idea of podcasts, which we are starting now in earnest. And I, I really like doing these. So that's that's just part of trying to help men get married, trying to be positive and proactive, trying to offer solutions instead of just griping and complaining. And you know, I could have gone MGTOW, you know, just like other people did. I was kind of shocked when I first heard about that. Uh, when I got back from the Philippines and getting married and I thought to myself, you know, things are really hard to find a wife. I thought back in 2015 when I was 53 years old, since then I've realized, no, it wasn't just me. It's a lot of people talking about how hard it is to get married. And so it was for me and it still is today. So the reason we have casting beyond the sea and the reason we have love beyond the sea is to help encourage men to look somewhere else, to go where they're wanted, to find a wife. And it did for me, and it happened very, very quickly. Over the course of my life, I had been involved with four main American dating sites, and a couple of them I uh, did again. And I think one or two were pay sites. There was Match.com, probably over about, who knows, seven or eight years of time. There was Match.com, there was eHarmony, there was Christian Mingle, and lastly, there was Plenty of Fish. Undoubtedly, many of you are familiar with those. Probably your response was similar to mine, which was very little response. There were, I think, some scammers and insincere, you know, fake profiles. I was alone for 30 years. By alone, I mean single, basically, you know, without a, without a girlfriend. I mean, it was, it was quite a drought. I wasn't in prison. I wasn't playing the field. I was just out there trying to mind my own business, working, you know, exercising, just trying to live my life, assuming I would find a wife somehow. And I knew I had to put some effort into it. I just didn't know I had to put the effort into it that I did. But I got married, and that's what we're essentially talking about throughout my channel and podcasts. Now, by the way, if somebody would like to join me here tonight, please let me know your experiences. If you have talked to a woman overseas, my experiences with a Filipina on camera, let me know if it took a while to get comfortable and how you got around to becoming comfortable. What did you learn through the process? How long did you chat with her? Anything you want to tell me about the webcam experience, how you prepared for it, how it went, if there were any problems communicating, any misunderstandings. And I would like to talk to people about that here tonight. Just some thoughts here. Um, we do have money for what is important to us. When I did find a wife, I paid a lot more on Christian Filipina than I did for some of those American sites. I think they were like $30 a month. I paid, um, back at the time, uh, that was about $1,000 I paid for Christian Filipina. Now, it's a paid site, but there's a reason for that. You have really good customer service. I certainly availed myself of that because I had a ton of questions. When I started this, looking for a wife overseas, I was kind of naive. I thought, great, if this works so well, 
I can go to the Philippines, get married, um, honeymoon, say goodbye to the family, and bring her back over to the United States. I just didn't know because I'd never thought about this before. And they told me, no, sir, that's not how it works. You have to go through immigration. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, okay, I guess. But then they're saying, well, it could be a year before you actually are with her. And I just shook my head and said, of all the luck. So now you're telling me you think I have a good chance, really good chance to find a wife on Christian Filipina, just like many thousands of people have. And I've waited so long. Now you're going to tell me I got to wait yet another year. I was so taken about, aback by that. I said, you know, this might be a great opportunity, really, but I, I don't know that I want to wait that long. I'll let you know in the morning. I'm going to sleep on this. I think I probably took a long shower and went to bed and thought about it, prayed about it, and thought to myself, okay, if I say no, then what? We're back to where we've been, probably alone the rest of my life. I don't want to do that. And, you know, if it works out that I can find somebody, maybe waiting a year wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So I said, okay, I'll go ahead and do this. Asked a lot of questions. Started um, looking around the website, you know, before I chatted with anybody. I probably took five days to look at the website and I'm not necessarily um, selling Christian Filipina here. It's where I met. It's what I'm familiar with. And I actually used the site and I used the visa services that you can find on lvbts.com. But I, I paid the money for it. Like I started to say, we have money for what's important to us. It was extremely important, absolutely necessary and imperative to me that I find a wife. So I tried this. I didn't even think ahead what all would be involved. And it's a good thing I didn't because I might have talked myself out of it. First things first. Let's see if it works, see if I can find somebody. And so I paid the money. First five days just taking notes. In fact, I have somewhere here on this desk a list of my final five finalists, I guess, my um, list. And, uh, of course, I narrowed that list down very quickly. If you followed my channel to my amazing Isa, who wanted me to focus on her, and she would focus on me. Nobody had asked me to focus on them before, especially a woman who was 27 years younger, very beautiful to me. And I thought, well, okay, um, I could stay here the rest of my life trying to communicate with women because there was so many people. I had a list of about 30, 35. Eventually I had to try to narrow it down and eventually just gave up, keep checking for new profiles because there were new profiles all the time. And I just, it just got to be overwhelming. So when she said that she would focus on me and hide her profile, if I would focus on her, you know, she didn't make me take my profile down, but I did decide, okay, I will do that. Let's just focus on each other, see how it goes. So, I believe we had known each other for, I don't know, four or five days before we actually had our first webcam. Now, this is going back over five years, so it's, it's probably pretty accurate. So I winked at her one day, I think that was March 17th, after joining Christian Filipino on March 13th, 2015. Four or five days after that, we had our first webcam. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Just waiting to see if other people will, will be listening or participating. We had our first webcam. Probably two weeks after that, I asked her to marry me. That's right. After 18 days of winking at her one day at break at work, I asked her to marry me. I have to admit, by 12 days, I was already thinking about it. I still have an email to my pastor that we included in my petition for her. Using a third party really helps with your petition, uh, especially somebody that offers their card, their you know contact information in case the embassy said, okay, maybe he's bluffing. I'll call his bluff and I'll call this guy. Yeah, he would have confirmed everything. I even have a video uh, where I'm interviewing Pastor Scott on Love Beyond the Sea. So um, that was all legit. And uh, six days later on day 18, I think it was a Saturday morning. I asked her if she would marry me. It was around 
April 4th. And she said, yes, if I go and see her. So being as excited as I've ever been in my life, I, I did have some, some money in reserve. I went out immediately to a jewelry store and I bought her a ring. I think we talked some more that day. It was probably a seven or 10 hour day as far as communicating with her. And that's something else we'll talk about here tonight. How much time should you spend communicating with her? So I know this sounds really fast and you could say, well, Bob, you're just crazy. You were naive. You know, you're just Forrest Gump, how it worked out so well for you. You just got lucky. You avoided the landmines and all that. Well, I have to admit, I didn't know much about scamming at that time. I didn't know much about the Philippines. Couldn't have found it on a map if, you know, my you know life was at stake i just knew it was wasn't very close to here and it was probably hot and they had beautiful women i'd always liked and i'd always heard these women make great wives why it didn't dawn on me earlier to try something like this i have no idea i just was in this this paradigm that I get. it had to be here locally it just had to be that was the only way it made the most sense you can communicate the most because you're closer in distance start getting to 50 100 miles out you start spending spending time driving and and with working you know five six days a week who has time so it's going to have to be local well was i wrong and one of the reasons i was wrong is because of webcamming which at the time i didn't even have a a webcam i had to go out to best buy get a webcam and absolutely i should mention if you don't have a webcam and you're going to be looking for a, a wife overseas You'll need to get a webcam. I think they're basically, I want to say, 50 to $80. Now, that was five years ago, 2015. But it's well worth it. The money I spent on the dating site to find my wife was well worth it because, you know, yeah, I, <laughs> I paid for a lifetime membership because I was so used to it taking so long to get anywhere that I figured it would be that way here but i was wrong because on the 59th day of joining christian filipina i was married and on my way to a honeymoon and coming back to the united states to uh, resume the petition in earnest and then i i could have seen her about six months later actually back in the states um, because i used christian filipino visa services and uh, we waited like eight months so she could attend the sister's wedding. She left the very next day and she's been with me here since January 11th of 2016. I did not have a YouTube channel then. That didn't start until Valentine's Day, appropriately enough, 2018. But I thought, you know, I, I want to share the wealth. I started watching other YouTube channels, so I am familiar with them. And if you are, we probably are familiar with some of the same channels. So I decided to throw my hat in the ring, start a channel myself and try to help people um, because I knew the climate was, you know, all women are like that and it's not worth getting married. It's, it's too risky. Nobody wants to help you get married anyway. Women, who knows what they want to do. They want to get married so late or they don't want to get married at all. You know, I, I just thought, well, look, if I can find somebody after going, I'll admit, as long as you don't tell anybody this, 30 years from the time I said, Bob, you better get married. You need a wife. Let's get going. I thought, okay, I'll propose this. And I, I figured I'd meet somebody in a couple weeks. You know, I was younger, 24 years old. And uh, meet somebody in a couple weeks, a year or two later, be married if I want to get married that fast. Well, 30 years goes by, you know, you're, 20s and 30s and 40s now you're 53 years old and you know i was desperate not desperate to make a bad choice but desperate to go well out of my comfort zone and try to find a woman from another country and that's what i did so i didn't complain that i found somebody in 54 days after spending money for a lifetime membership i just thought it might take that long i was wrong and you would be wrong, too, if you thought it took a long time to meet somebody. Now, I mentioned Christian Filipina, again, because I use their services. I can speak 
from experience. There are thousands of Asian and Filipino, Filipino dating sites out there. It's a big deal. I just happen to use Christian Filipina, so I know a lot of people recommend it and tout it. Um, for what it's worth, I actually used it. So I wasn't complaining because that's what I signed up to do. There are a lot of options when you get around to deciding to webcam. And so, like I said, you need a list. You're probably not going to be webcamming with 30 people, right? I mean, unless you want to make a career out of it. And even if you were retired, you know, I don't know that you could keep up with it. Sooner or later, you need to make a choice start a list, pare it down to something workable, like five, for example, devote the necessary time to it. In those five days that I took before I started really chatting and setting up webcams with Filipinas, I took two days off work. I think my first couple of days might have been a weekend, so that helped. But then I took two days off work because I thought, wow, I can't believe it. I mean, here I am trying to look around at different profiles and ping, ping, ping. Um, you're getting all these chat requests. And I probably got, I don't know, a couple hundred chat requests in the first week or so. And it was incessant. And I just, they had a button where you just say uh, more or less politely decline. I don't remember what it said, but I didn't want to engage in those chats. I wanted to spend time looking over the many, many, many profiles the profiles there in Christian Filipina, they'll, the women will say their age preference, which is nice because I, I don't think you get that on a lot of the American dating sites. You just, you're kind of blind about the whole thing. What do they want? What are they comfortable with? But they did put that on Christian Filipina. They also put the height and the, and the weight and, and some basic questions they would ask you. And, and then you would take it from there and from that profile information, you begin to line up these potentially terrifying webcams that I want to help not be so terrifying tonight. So spend the necessary time on it. In fact, I've said before, and I'll say it now, I think you pretty much have to make it a full-time job if you're serious. They say you have to be obsessed about losing weight. They say you have to be obsessed about getting in shape and lifting weights. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. In other words, you have to set your mind to it, be committed, and just not let anything get in your way. You have to be extremely focused, extremely driven. You have to try to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And hopefully through my many videos on Love Beyond the Sea and on LVBTS.com and upcoming podcasts on casting beyond the sea throughout the years more and more people will be exposed to that and will be able to find a wife finally as well but take lots of notes however you can do that you might type it up you might use these yellow notepads that i did um it's up to you um one of the things you probably want to take notes of is of course any notable comments she makes her age, whether her you're in her age preference or not, if she says that the age is negotiable or you know she's not necessarily set in that, those age brackets, make a note of that, whatever you have to. And some of the names might be the same, although they're sometimes can be very unusual names. So just make sure uh, you write whatever website you're on, write down their number, their uh, ID number, because you, know, you might get some with similar names and, and that could be confusing. So check profiles, recheck profiles, search for new ones. And, um, you know, you'll chat with a workable number at a time. I think it's best to, at least my opinion, work yourself down to chatting with one at a time. But you're going to want to explore, talk to different people, kind of feel things out. And that may be with, like I did, five webcams at a time. Webcamming with Filipinas is a very fun experience. Just don't get addicted to it. I said you have to be serious about it, and I think you do, but that doesn't mean you get addicted to the chatting because 
this follows different stages. You want to end up getting married. For that to happen, you want to end up taking a trip to the Philippines. Right now with the COVID-19 situation, you can't just hop on a plane like I did. I remember proposing to her on April 4th, 2015 on the computer. And I believe April 25th, just three weeks later, I was with her in person at the Manila airport. I didn't even have a passport, I think, when I proposed to her. Fortunately for me, that a passport weekend, like the very next weekend, I stood in line. That took about 10 hours and um, almost thought I was going to miss out. But yeah, I got my ID, the photo ID there for the passport, got the expedited, and that all went well. Got time off work early in the year, so I had time off work for that. It took like a month maybe, but it was worth it because I, had, I was very excited, you know, when I when I came back. So it's um, the Philippines, for example, is a very far away, 9,800 flight miles, but it, it's a lot closer than you think. One of the ways is to choose a webcam app and to be involved with a Filipina. Now, I'm just checking over here back at Podbean. Like I said, this is the first time that uh, I have done something like this been talking for about 32 minutes just trying to warm up and let you know this is um, casting beyond the sea it's a channel designed to help men find love overseas this is the first podcast I've ever done we're going to talk about webcamming here very soon now if you join Christian Filipina you can use the Christian Filipina webcam a lot of women there want to go to Skype or Viber, or move it to Facebook, other apps, you know, that enable you to communicate face-to-face -face and see her surroundings. Hopefully, she's at home. I know one of the women I talked to was at an internet cafe. Some will tell you that's a bad sign. If she's at an internet cafe, she is surely a scammer, and that's, there's no reason to believe that. She may be at an internet cafe because that's the only place she can go. She doesn't have access to that at home. So having said that, it, it is nice if you can see them speaking at home. Her family then in the background knows what she's doing and hears what she's saying and and um, you get to kind of see her where she's comfortable. And I tell you, it was quite a thrill for me to finally meet my wife, uh, go to the house that she was when she was talking to me and see the background that I was so familiar with. And I thought that was, uh, that was very, very cool. Now, um, unless you are willing and able to travel many times to the Philippines, you can adequately get to know your marriage prospect on screen. Yes, there's a lot to be said for being in contact with her. Um, in person, absolutely there is. There are some advantages to just webcamming as well. For example, you're not going to waste a lot of time because you can't be there together. You can devote more time to being serious. I mean, I believe these women want to get married and they want to talk about that sort of thing. You're not going to just go to a movie and sit there, not talk to each other for two hours or or, or go out and eat. You're going to be there face to face. You can talk. You can pretty much do whatever you want to do. But you should be talking about marriage because that's what you're on there for. You're talking to someone thousands of miles away who probably wants to get married. They're probably more concerned about if the person they're talking with, you, are someone that wants to get married. So you just need to realize that, look, I've been married over five years. And I proposed to her before I met her. We had a lot of time in those 18 days and then uh, a few more weeks after that before I met her to talk. And we did talk about four hours a day. I think one day was seven. I think the most might have been 10 hours. Weekend, of course, or a day I wasn't working. But you'll have to pay attention to body language. Obviously, nobody's going to talk to them four hours a day if they get the idea that it's just not working. 
they're not clicking, um, communication isn't good, the understanding isn't good. But pay attention to body language, of course. Um, keep your eyes open. Um, pay attention to fidgeting and and, and if she's looking down or if she's looking away or if she's looking bored or rolling her eyes and, you know, is she smiling? Is she laughing? Does she look comfortable? Ask important questions. I'm going to have a list of those for you later. Ask important questions. And if you can, try to communicate with her family. Maybe not right away, but eventually that would be a good sign if she wanted you to talk to a family member. Now, I saw my wife so much on camera, I was completely comfortable going to meet her, to marry her, you know, even though we hadn't met in person yet. I tell her if she had shown up in a wheelchair, I would still have married her. You know, I married her because I thought she, um, I thought she had character and, and of course I was attracted to her. I don't, think men usually marry women they aren't attracted to and you certainly can marry someone you're attracted to um, with a Filipina I think they're very beautiful when I met my wife it's kind of anticlimactic, probably because of all the time we spent I don't know why I just didn't expect it to be the way it was I didn't expect to feel so comfortable with her like it was no big deal being with her, going to the malls, meeting family, being married to her, the honeymoon, you'd think after 30 years, I, I would just, you know, this would be such a stunning event, but it wasn't. It just, it just all felt so right and natural. So uh, another comment here, if her English is still developing, Webcamming is good because texting, if you rely too much on texting, that can be hard to discern what kind of mood she's in. We had our most trouble, my wife and I, on Viber. Even to this day, whether it's Viber or text messages, I kind of can't tell if she's upset with me or not. It's just the way I see her words. And you know, when we're talking face to face, there was one point when we said, in fact, I can still picture it in my mind, we decided we're just not going to Viber anymore. Well, we're going to do Skype face to face, but the Viber messaging, something just wasn't right. And I remember one day I was in the cafeteria, it was after work, and I went outside. And I talked to her and I said, what is going on here? Now she was, let's see, that would probably be very, very early in her morning. Since there's like 12, 13, 14 hour time zone here in the United States in Nebraska. And I said, I don't know if this is going to work. What is going on here? Why are you so upset with me? I don't get it. And finally she said that I had written. You said, you wrote. You were, what did she say? You were still chatting with other women. Or you had been chatting with other women. And I saw that and I thought, well, no, I haven't been chatting with other Filipinas. Where are you getting that? I said, I, I had been chatting with other Filipinas. So why are you so upset with me? You know, it seems obvious now, but at the time, I, it was almost ready to go on to my number two. And then she said, well, you said you were still talking. And I said, well, when did I say that? Show me the quote. I don't believe that. And she showed me, and it's something like, I said I had been chatting with other Filipinas. Well, what that meant was, I had been chatting with other Filipinas. I used to be chatting with other Filipinas. But since I gave her my word, we would focus on each other. It's just her and I. But yes, I had chatted with other Filipinas, but I was talking past tense before I made the decision, and we made the decision to go steady with each other. And that's just one of a slew of examples I can give you where we had trouble with just trying to rely on texting, and I would be surprised if I was the only one having that kind of issue. So again, um, 
let's say you're listening right now, if you were to download the Podbean app on your mobile device, you could chat here. You could even call in. We can put you on and see how that goes. I could use some practice since I, I don't know. I haven't gone through those steps. But And uh, doing these podcasts, I really don't know if I've got a, a newer audience or will build a new audience or if it will be people I know from YouTube. I have no idea. We're just jumping in the water here and, and trying something new. So I'm going to go on with my main points here on facing webcam fears. The Filipina, you can make that any woman from another country in a long or very long distance relationship. So webcamming with a Filipina, it's a must, but it does not have to be a harrowing experience. Some of my pointers would be she might be uncomfortable too. There's a good chance if you're like I was, that is loud and where you're going to get rid of that. 53 years of age and talking to women from another country. By the way, I was talking with uh, younger women. I was 53 and the women were all a lot younger than I was. My wife was 26 and that was quite an unusual experience so um they might be uncomfortable just tell yourself that you know they might be uncomfortable they also um might not be uncomfortable but i think one thing you'll find is they'll be pleasant to talk to try not to assume anything as it could ruin your chance to be comfortable for instance don't assume that she knows much about you or has some gigantic set of must-haves that she's got all these rules that you must follow uh, to to be able to um, get her it's not like that there are some women in in the united states and in the west like that that just make it almost impossible to you know feel like you have a shot with them but I just never saw that with any of the, let's say, five women I talked to. They were all very comfortable, and they just let me guide the discussion and ask the questions and then kind of see when you can uh, jump in with an off-the-cuff comment. It's okay to have some questions prepared. I certainly have some I will talk to you about. And uh, you can ask her some questions about something you might have seen in her profile to, to break the ice. But the, the ice has to be broken sometime. It's you're not going to die. It's not going to kill you. Um, she's probably not going to be uncomfortable. She's probably going to be, you know, comfortable. And she's probably be shy and pleasant. And uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the uh, circumstances. And if you're aware of a whole bunch of stereotypes negative ones try not to be thinking about those stereotypes like she only wants you for your money um my wife is at work right now and uh you know she works five six days a week and um she you know we we've talked about the money money is something that comes up a lot i've done my share of videos on that um can always ask me questions here that's the idea one day we do podcasts people call in or leave comments and i answer them that's what i would like to do now if there is a large age gap which there frequently is i have quite a few videos on love beyond the sea which you can also find on lvbts.com about having a younger wife and i don't really like making a big deal out of this because you know, if you're married to a younger Filipina, many of us have just come to the conclusion that it's just not really that big of a deal. There are logistical things you should know about. We won't have to talk about them here. Maybe we'll do a podcast or two or three or five on that one of these days. But you might be scared to death to talk to a pretty young woman. I know it's a little bit nerve wracking at first. The, but I would suggest that you uh, be in a condition of not thinking that you are doing something wrong by webcamming with a younger woman. In fact, I did a video called Shame on You 
for wanting a, one, a younger wife because if you feel a sense of shame then that's probably going to come through on camera somehow now i've said this many times in my videos i mean even though i wasn't looking for a younger wife all my life i had some knowledge of what constitute a marriage and having somebody within the same couple years age bracket does not mean that's the way it has to be i was pretty open on what worked which was just biblically which was just to marry a christian so i wanted a christian that was it and um obviously a christian that would marry me you know take interest and in, and in give me the time of day and uh, since i've been alone for so long i did want and highlight a younger woman i talked to about five women webcam they i think would have all been have been amenable to getting married probably all the hundreds of women i had to turn down chats with would have been amenable to getting married but unlike american dating sites you have options you have choices and uh, i highly rec recommend christian filipina i have a uh, affiliate banner link there on lvbts.com same thing with the visa services so it's kind of a a complete situation and it's worth it you're looking for a wife if a wife matters to you and you're running out of time i think you need to consider overseas if you're talking about a younger woman just be comfortable with the idea that there's nothing wrong with that if you're comfortable chatting with her, she's going to notice that you're comfortable and she'll probably be comfortable herself. I would even avoid saying something like, you know, I've never talked to a younger Filipina before, or I've never done anything like talking to you. It was all new to me when I chatted with women there and uh, they're all about half my age or younger, but you need to not think that you are doing something wrong if you're in your own home where you probably will be that's a good place to do the webcam so make your space comfortable make sure it looks neat with mobile apps you can even webcam on your phone now and i know people have like when they got to know them a little bit they drive around their favorite places and they have the phone on and and say well here i am going here and this is what it looks like over here and what a great way to kind of go out on a date with that person that's thousands of miles away using your your mobile device and and i know people have watched movies together which is kind of a pretty cool idea i like doing that with my wife here um there's lots of creativity you can have um, she probably would be a good person to ask for that for things you can do um, to make it interesting. So make sure your, your place looks nice. And uh, looking back, my wife and I, uh, we would eat together while we were talking for those four hours a day. For example, um, when I was making breakfast, she wanted me to, for some reason, have the camera on. <laughs> when I was making breakfast in the morning, at that time, before I was married, I got up like, Boy, two and a half, three hours before I had to be at work. And I'd cook for the whole day and um, very elaborate system and ate really, really well. And then I would get together and talk to her while I was eating and then run off to work. And by that time, it'd be pretty much time for her to, uh, to go to bed. And then in the morning, she would eat in the morning and, and I would make my supper. Actually, I already had it made from the morning. I would just eat it and then I'd be ready to go and talk to her so you know one and a half two hours before work uh, one and a half two hours or so after work before bed and more on the weekend and we got to know each other um, very quickly that way look you just walked in the door hi hon so uh, make your space uh, comfortable um, make it look like you're having company over um, I wouldn't like sit there and be so casual, casual. You'd be drinking a beer while talking to her. That, that seems a little, um, I don't know, 
uncouth, I guess. Uh, like I said earlier, make some notes uh, what you can say at least to get off to a, a good start. You know, break the stage fright. Just have something to say, an introductory statement or a few questions based on her profile. Again, would be a good way to go about it. Be courteous. Don't use any bad language. Dress nice. Don't have to wear your Sunday best, but if you're going to meet her for coffee somewhere, why not, you know, wear the same type of clothes you would if you were going on a, on a local date. Think of it as a date because that's what it is. It is a date. Just checking back over here. Also, some, another point here, um, she is likely easy to talk to and eager to talk to you. They all seemed excited for me. I, I kind of doubt that there will be a whole lot of awkward silence. If she's on that dating site, she's eager for somebody to call her, and, and it's a big deal to her. Maybe she's done it a bunch of times already, and so she'll be used to talking to a foreigner. You probably have not been used to speaking to a Filipina, but that Filipina uh, may be more used to talking to uh, Westerners and you know, just may, may be very relaxed. You could ask her how her search is going on whatever website that you may have met her on. How's it going? You know, have you had any luck so far with guys? Any interesting stories to tell with these guys? And tell her about your own search that, you know, takes a little bit of time and, and hopefully you'd be comfortable talking about that. If you're looking for a, a younger woman, it's certainly okay to tell her that and and, and tell her why, uh, if she asks you why a younger Filipina, be honest. I mean, I, that's just that's just the way I roll. I think there's no point in being ashamed of what you're believing or what you're saying or doing. Just, just be honest. I, I think she'll understand just fine. You can ask her about her family. Ask her about her brothers, her sisters, her nieces and nephews and so on. You know, mama and papa. I think she'd be glad to talk to you about family members. Find things she wrote in her profile, and you can ask her to elaborate on that, go into more detail. Because often a, a Filipina doesn't have a whole lot that they write in their profile. You can let her know that you are very serious in search of a wife like I did, and let her know what you have to offer. Let her know what marriage to you will be like. That can sound kind of frightening, I guess, but um, I think that if you word it right, and if it's what she wants to hear, you could quickly move to the front of the line. Again, you're not just meeting somebody you met on Plenty of Fish that lives in your own town that you could see any time. You're talking about someone that is going to, you know, you can't meet in person for a while because they're so far away. And, and there's limited opportunities to do that because of the cost and vacations and all of that. And right now, COVID-19 is a big obstacle to doing that. Going back involves more time and cost. And also the immigration wait is more time and more cost. So because of this, I've always kind of felt like you need to move, you know, aggressively to try to find somebody and, and saying, yeah, this is, this is who you're talking to. This is the way I see uh, marriage to me being like. Um, that's kind of an aggressive move, but that's that's the way I talked about it. I mean, that's why I was there to get married. Now, some women have told me that other guys that they chatted with uh, usually often don't have much to say. So... Um, be prepared. Don't be one of those guys because if she's shy and, and she's not asking many questions and and if you're not talkative, then <laughs> it could be uncomfortable. So like I said, consider some of these tap, tips I'm giving you and sharing with you and the, the questions that I'll talk about later on. By the way, I'm allowed two hours to do this podcast. I've never done a live podcast, so it's, it's still time to, to join in and and leave a comment, and that's what we want to have happen today and in the future where it becomes interactive. 
So another tip, be honest, be transparent. It's okay to say how you feel. Let her see that you are excited to see her. Wave, blow her a kiss, tell her she is guapa, which means beautiful. If you're in America, time zone different affords you time to talk before work and before going to bed. Uh, probably pretty much anywhere, I guess, in the country. You just have to ask her what time it is over there. You know, with a 12, 13, 14 hour time zone difference, I thought that worked really good for a, such a long distance relationship. How much to talk? How much to webcam? I already told you that I talked to her. Of course, I'm more talkative than a lot of people. Although there are guys a lot more talkative than me. But before and after work, average about, for us, four hours a day. That's not the standard or anything like that. We have a guy at work, Ethiopian man, who I worked with. And he suggested I um, try a woman from a foreign country, actually. And so I actually did. And I, I married her. But he always told me, we t you guys talk too much. What could you possibly talk about? I don't know. I actually trying to think about what we talked about. I don't remember. It <laughs> seems like a long time ago, but I don't think it was ever really difficult. I think early on we decided that we were going to have a future together. So maybe the things we talked about were centered around our relationship and being married and her talking to my family and me getting to know her family and making wedding plans and so on. Uh, but that's just the way we went about it so you know this this man thought we should be talking more like several times a week not seven days a week maybe 10 or 15 minutes at a time and that was probably his personality although he was a talker too but for some reason um, we had quite different perspective on how long to do these webcams so i didn't agree since i wanted to learn more about her enjoy talking to her and it never felt forced. Most of the testimonies I see involving the couple, uh, Western and Filipina, they also said they talked for hours a day, and it seemed like it was very easy for them to do. And I can see why. If you're enjoying it, if it's going well, you really don't want it to end. So again, I, I don't really remember what we were talking about so much. I proposed to her on day 18, and after that, we talked about the logistics of how to meet her in several weeks. After marriage, we talked about what our new life would be like and the immigration process. She had a lot of work to do um, with the marriage. She planned out the whole thing herself, and she was working on it even when I was there trying to get everything just right, even on those two days before the marriage, when you're not supposed to do anything, I guess is their custom. But finding a, a barong big enough to fit me was uh, a challenge, but we found one. We got everything to work, thanks to her. And um, so those are just some things I, I jotted down here to talk about tonight. I don't think there are a lot of rules. Uh, just be polite see how it goes and you never know you could be one conversation away from finding your love beyond the sea i know i was but we soon went beyond the sea got on those four planes to see her and four planes back and i remember showing everybody that would listen our pictures it seemed like it took a week to get there it's probably about 34 hours and it seemed like I took about six hours to get back. It was um, quite an experience. And um, I've talked to some other gentlemen who said, you know, I was inspired by the, the videos I've seen. And I'm going to consider a Filipina. And then they'll say they found a Filipina. And, you know, why not, um, why not try? Because time, unless you're a younger man, is not on your side. At 53, I felt like I needed to do something I hadn't done before. And so I, uh, I, I can't believe I did it, but I also can't believe it, it went as well as it did. The webcamming was a huge part of it. Having a profile that talks about who you are, what you want, what you're looking for, and, uh, and then talking to people online 
you'll find out when you have a lot of choices, it makes it hard. Don't look for the perfect Filipina. If you want to look for a wife overseas, you can find her. You can find her probably much faster than you think. So are you prepared to get married to somebody that quick? I'm not saying you have to. I was, I was prepared to take a chance. It wasn't my intention at all to get married so fast. Not at all. But once I saw that I could, I seized that opportunity. So let me talk about some questions here. If you go to lvbts.com, I've got them all listed there. Thanks again to Mr. E, who has put together this wonderful website, lvbts.com, provided many excellent ideas, contributed to some videos, is responsible for um, you know the podcasts and some production and the whole idea and setting it up on you know Spotify and Google and TuneIn and many many things I can't say here. Um, Mr. E is responsible for so much credit to him once again. And these questions are on there. There's a whole bunch of questions to make your job easier in this all important task of you communicating online, face to face, on camera. Questions I have. Initial questions with someone you're just meeting for the first time. Then there's another set of questions for afterwards when maybe, you know, you're getting more serious and you're thinking, hey, could this be the one, the so-called the one? I've got a list of questions for that. And I don't believe there is just one. So don't be paralyzed that you might marry a Filipina too soon and miss out on the one or marry the wrong one. You, you, there's lots of them that could be the one. And there's lots of questions to start with. For example, again, this is just a list of initial questions for a Filipina you met online. You can just, you know, print these out, jot them down, whatever. You know, where are you originally from? Where else have you lived? What was your favorite, you know, place? Or where is your favorite place even? And, and why is that? What was your parents' relationship like? Have her talk about her parents. What was their relationship like with their parents? Do you wish, or do you feel your parents treated you and your siblings the same, or was there favoritism? What kind of student were you? What are some of your favorite childhood memories? What was your favorite subject in school and why? See, it's not so hard. What's the kindest thing you've ever done for someone? What's the kindest thing someone's done for you? Are you close with members of your extended family? What are some prominent things that have happened in your past that you think have greatly contributed to who you are today? And these questions are not just icebreakers or time killers. You will be able to learn about her by asking her these questions. And most people are uh, probably more comfortable talking about themselves than asking somebody else questions. So I provided these questions for you so you can just start asking them. You say, tell me about your favorite childhood pet. Did you have a lot of friends as a child? Or did you have just a few really good ones? Who was your hero when you were growing up? You know, you ask her, what was your ideal vacation spot if they, if they had one? If you could spend the day with someone famous, alive or dead, who would it be? What is your favorite board game? Describe yourself in a single word. Describe me, what they think of you so far in a single word. Who is your celebrity crush? She'll think you're a fantastic conversationalist when you ask her questions like these. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten and liked? Can you tell me about your most embarrassing moment? How about what is your favorite item of clothing? You can ask them if they're superstitious. If they could be with anyone else for a day, who would you choose? If you had a horse, what funny name would you give it? What do you think of public displays of affection? Describe your dream house. What's your dream job? If you're having a bad day, how could I cheer you up? It's a good way to learn about her. You could ask when you're sick, do you like to have someone taking care of you or do you prefer to be left alone until you feel better? Do you have a favorite sport? 
What sport would you never want to watch? If you're lost, do you ask for directions? You know, they could describe their ideal vacation, ideal weekend, favorite dessert. Do they prefer coffee or tea? A lot of easy questions here, and some of them she'll have to think more about. And of course, you know, if she asks you these questions in return, you'll want to be able to answer them. And as you can see, just in these questions, you could spend a long time in communicating with each other, and that's just going to lead to more questions. But being armed with questions like this, I think will help you get off to a good start. And if not, that may be a sign that that you just need to move on to another Filipina. Just a few more questions. What's one household chore you don't know how to do? Uh, who's your hero now? Your favorite book, favorite magazine? What kind of music do you like? You know, and who are your favorite singers or bands? Now, I do feel that eventually you'll want to get down to um, focusing on one woman to chat with. I know when you've got choices, you're going to feel like, well, I want to talk to them all. Well, talking to them all is going to take up an awful lot of your time. And, um, and that's going to be frustrating because you're not going to know what to do. Then you're going to check and see that 40 or 50 more women have joined in the age group you're looking for. And then you're going to be thinking, well, maybe this one would be just a little bit better. And I think it's best not to do that. I think it's best just to realize that two imperfect people are looking for a relationship, two imperfect people that have made mistakes in their life, and hopefully they both want to not repeat those mistakes and they've learned from their past and they have realistic expectations of each other and they they want to be together they realize they need companionship and they believe they can find it you're talking about a woman willing to go thousands of miles away and let's not forget that it is important for her to provide for her family back home that's something that you should be comfortable with and accepting of before you even get involved with someone. I think it's just not realistic to think a woman uh, from a country like the Philippines is going to be going, leaving everybody and everything to go thousands of miles away someday, not knowing when to go back to be with a Westerner that she doesn't know all that well. And then that she's not going to be sending money back home. She's going to be sending money back home. That's a given. That's why she wants to work. She wants to go to your country and work. And we talk a lot about that in Love Beyond the Sea. Teaching her how to drive will be important because that goes along with working. Learning to trust her and not control her. Those are things I want to help you with because... With this channel, it's not just, you know, how to meet her. That's the easy part. I got married in 54 days. That was pretty easy after, you know, a long, long time of being alone. I want Casting Beyond the Sea and Love Beyond the Sea to be a place where men can come and interact, ask questions. I'm going to answer them as honestly and as thoroughly as I can, because I don't want anybody to be misled. I don't want anybody uh, maybe believing some things you've heard from other people that maybe there's a reason they feel that way, and, and they're wrong. You know, I know something about a Filipina and the family life. I don't know everything. I'm not going to claim to, but I do want to pass on what I've learned, and I can tell you she's going to want to provide for her family. She's going to want to work. If you say, nope, you're my wife, we've got our own needs, our own problems, you're not sending money back home, then by all means, do not pursue a Filipina or any woman from a country that would be developing because she's going to want to send money back home. And if she doesn't, that would be a red flag. Why doesn't she love her family? Why is she going to buck the system of not providing for that family? If she's an older daughter, she'll be working 
in providing for her family. That doesn't mean that she won't use her earnings to help you. She will, but she needs to provide for her family. She's going to tell you, no, I don't want your help providing for my family. That's not your job. It's mine. And be glad if she says that, and she probably will. Allow her to work, allow her to help her family. I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but I thought it'd be important just to interject that you're looking for a woman to marry her, not just to have as a pen pal, not somebody just to brag to your friends that you talk to this pretty young woman and you're gonna talk to another one. I don't. I think that'd get dull and boring very quick. The fun, the excitement, the fulfillment, the satisfaction is in getting married. And that's what I did very quickly you don't have to get married very quickly. I was just chomping at the bit and I got married. And so I started these podcasts and YouTube channel to help other men realize they don't have to give up. They don't have to be alone. They don't have to go make towel. They don't have to become and, you know, remain an incel. Um, there are women out there, lots of them to marry. You just may have to do things you never thought of doing before in order to find that woman someday as I did. So I think that's um, going to be a wrap on today's first ever podcast. We certainly hope to have more, more podcasts coming up on Casting Beyond the Sea. Thank you for listening tonight. Join us again next time when we have another topic. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Podbean so you never miss an episode to chat and call in live on a uh, podcast you'll need to download the Podbean app on your mobile device and follow there like, nice to hear somebody next time to communicate with and if you haven't subscribed to Love Beyond the Sea YouTube channel and followed us on Facebook or Twitter make sure to and stay up to date make sure to stop by our website the Community Corner Message Board to meet other like-minded people we're searching for their love beyond the sea.